that even though he had used those words, he had never engaged in the actions he had described. That denial, in my opinion, triggered what is happening now. For Summer Zervos, the Access Hollywood tape hit a nerve. She had not intended to come forward prior to hearing Mr. Trump's words on that tape. But after hearing Mr. Trump on it, she decided that it was her duty to speak out. At or near the time of what she alleges was Mr. Trump's sexual misconduct towards her, she did share with two people close to her what she experienced with Mr. Trump, but she told nobody else. I have spoken to those two individuals who verified to me that she did share with them shortly after the alleged incidents occurred many of the accusations that she will describe today. Donald Trump thinks that he can do and say whatever he wants. He believes that he can go on national television and deny that he acted on his outrageous and disgusting beliefs as captured in his own words on tape and played throughout the country for all to hear. His response that it was all locker room talk is chilling when you consider the words coming from a man seeking the highest office in the land. A number of women have come forward who claim that it was more than just talk. He allegedly accosted a woman on an airplane, pinned another against the wall and shoved his tongue down her throat, walked into a beauty pageant dressing room as though he owned the women and they had a right to look at him naked or partially clad at his pleasure, including looking at teenagers. To all of these women, Donald issues staunch denials and threatens to sue the newspapers that report their accusations he thinks that he can say whatever he wants and then muzzle his accusers? Ms. Zervos is one more woman who claims that she was accosted by Donald at the Beverly Hills Hotel when she met with him to discuss employment opportunities. This is very near and dear to me, as I have spent the last 40 years fighting for women who allege quid pro quo harassment, for example, having to perform sexual favors in order to get a job or who are seeking advancement. Instead of a job, Ms. Zervos claims that she got the Donald all over her, kissing her, touching her breast, and leading her into his bedroom. Donald, before you can become President of the United States, you must first learn how to treat women with respect. Your words and your alleged actions convey the exact opposite. Your words alone, as captured on tape, are disgraceful and suggest a belief system which is far below the dignity of the office that you seek. The White House is not a locker room, and the American people deserve better than a president who believes that is entitled to grope and grab and sexually assault women at his pleasure. You should be ashamed of yourself. How can we hold you up as an example for our children? The office of the President of the United States is not reserved for the worst of us, someone without values who regards women as sexual objects or who thinks that his star power gives him a license to denigrate women. Your star has been irreparably tarnished by your own words, coupled with the accusations of the many women who have made allegations against you. You think, you think that this is all one large conspiracy. I have news for you, Donald. There is no conspiracy. It is you and you alone who have brought you to this precipice. It is you and you alone who is responsible. It is my understanding that your campaign may try to discredit the accusers and in essence are declaring war on women. But women will not be silenced by this tactic. Women are now empowered, and they will not be bullied into silence anymore. Spare our nation from having to endure any further embarrassment. Seek help for your beliefs and alleged inappropriate sexual misconduct towards a number of women and girls, and emerge only after you do what is necessary to become a better human being. 
and are able to treat all of our daughters, our mothers, and our sisters with the respect and the dignity that they deserve. And now I present Summer. So let's move over. I met Mr. Trump when I was a candidate on The Apprentice in season five. I had the utmost admiration for Mr. Trump, and even after I was fired, I continued to see him as a possible mentor and potential employer. In 2007, I was going to be in New York for a social obligation. I contacted Mr. Trump's office to see if he was available for lunch. I was informed that he could not have lunch, but that he would like to meet me with him in his office. When I arrived, he kissed me on the lips. I was surprised, but felt that perhaps it was just his form of greeting. We sat and spoke. He was extremely complimentary. He said that he was impressed with how I handled myself on The Apprentice. He said that he had never met anyone with my combination of being smart, attractive, and with the largest set of balls as I had. He was say, he said that he would love to have he said he would love to have me work for him. Mr. Trump said he would be coming to Los Angeles soon and he would contact me. I felt as though I was reaching for my brass ring. I was very excited. I felt as though my dream of Ms. working for Mr. Trump might come true. As I was about to leave, he again kissed me on the lips. This made me feel nervous and embarrassed. This is not what I wanted or expected. He asked me for my phone number, and I scrawled it down with a marker. I left hurriedly and called a friend who lived in New York because I was upset by the kiss. I also called my parents to let them know what had happened. I spoke at length to my loved ones, and we came to the conclusion that this was undoubtedly some form of greeting, and that I should not take it as anything other than that. Mr. Trump called early in the morning, of the day I returned home. He referred to me as his OC angel. He wanted to know who was with me at that hour. He scolded me about my penmanship because it was difficult for him to read my telephone number as I had written it for him. Even though he had called me, he, he concluded the call by asking me for my phone number. He then called again days later to let me know that he was coming to Los Angeles. He then, he again called me after he had just landed in Los Angeles. He asked me to meet him that evening at the Beverly Hills Hotel and asked me where I, I would like to have dinner. When I arrived, his security guard greeted me at the hotel. He walked with me to greet Mr. Trump. I assumed we were going to a restaurant in the hotel. Instead, I was taken to a bungalow. The security guard opened the door and I went in. I was standing in the entryway. To my left was a bedroom, and I saw Mr. Trump's clothes on the bed. I did not see him, but he greeted me with hello in a sing-song voice. It sounded like, hello. I thought the mistake had been made, and Mr. Trump thought he was speaking to someone he was more familiar with. I walked further into the living room, away from the bedroom, and sat down. I waited for about 15 minutes until Mr. Trump emerged. He had his suit on. I stood up and he came to me and started kissing me open mouthed as he was pulling me towards him. I walked away and I sat down in a chair. He was on a love seat across from me and I made an attempt at conversation. He then asked me to sit next to him. I complied. He then grabbed my shoulder and began kissing me again very aggressively and paced his placed his hand on my breast. I pulled back and walked to another part of the room. He then walked up, grabbed my hand, and walked me into the bedroom. I walked out. He then turned me around and said, let's lay down and watch some telly telly. He put me in an, embra in an embrace and I tried to push him away. I pushed his chest to put space between us and I said, come on man, get real. He repeated my words back to me get real, as he began thrusting his genitals. 
He tried to kiss me again with my hand still on his chest and I said, dude, you're tripping right now. Attempting to make it clear, I was not interested. He said, what, what do you want? And I said, I came to have dinner. He said, okay, we'll have dinner. He paced around the room. He acted like he was a bit angry. He pointed out that someone had delivered a fruit basket. I felt that it was to show me how important he was. As we were waiting for dinner, I sat across the room for him as far as away as possible. He started saying that he did not think I had ever known love or had ever been in love. I did not want to discuss my personal life with him. Then just before dinner arrived, he transformed into being all about business and began questioning me as though I was on a job interview. Dinner was delivered to the bungalow. When dinner arrived, he asked me to wait in a small room. I felt that he did not want the waiter to see me. After the table was set, he beckoned me to come out. We shared a club sandwich. The conversation then focused on the fact that I had a mortgage on my home, which I told him was in good standing. He spoke about, he was, he spoke about how he was able to maneuver, maneuver to get out of debt. He told me that I need to let my house to go into default and tell the bank they would take it back. Tell the bank they could take it back. He advised that then the bank would then take anything to rid themselves of a problem loan. He told me to call the bank and tell them I was leaving the keys on the table, and on a table, and for them to just pick them up. He said that would be a mini version of what he does. He urged me not to make another payment on my home loan. He then abruptly said he was tired and that he needed to go to bed and ended the conversation. He told me to meet him in the morning at his golf course in Palos Verdes. I was very conflicted as to what had occurred. I wondered if the sexual behavior was some kind of test or whether or not I had passed. Obviously, he so wanted me <laughs> Obviously, he so wanted to talk to me about a job in Obviously, he so wanted to talk to me about a job even though I had turned his sexual advances down. From the hotel, I drove straight to our family business to speak to my father and he gave his advice. I decided to go to the golf course. I decided to go to the golf course the next day. Mr. Trump introduced me to the general manager and he gave me a tour. When I got back from the tour, Mr. Trump was not there. I never saw him again. Mr. Trump called a few days later to ask if I had called the bank as he had instructed. I told him that it was Christmas Eve and I had not done so as of yet. The general manager called me later that week and offered me a job at the golf course for half of what I had told Mr. Trump I was seeking in terms of salary. I called Mr. Trump and told him that I was upset and I felt that I was being penalized for not sleeping with him. Mr. Trump said that he was golfing and could not discuss it at that time. In a subsequent conversation about a job, Mr. Trump told me that I should never again use his private number and that if I wanted to reach him, I should contact him through his office. Even though Mr. Trump had sexually harassed me, I still wanted to get a job within the Trump Organization. I felt that since I had made it clear to him that I was not interested in having a sexual relationship with him, that if he gave me a job that would be based solely on merit and we would be able to work together. When I contacted Mr. Trump, he asked me to send him a letter setting forth jobs within his organization that I felt I was well suited for, which I did. When I, sub su when I subsequently spoke with him, he gave me the runaround. He told me that he had not received the letter that I sent him and then told me that he could not afford to hire me as he was laying off thousands of, thousands of employees. I was disappointed but harbored no ill will towards Mr. Trump whatsoever and felt there was no point in any further attempt to get a job with Mr. Trump. During Mr. Trump's fight for the Republican nomination, I saw and heard Mr. Trump's nonstop, Mr. Trump nonstop on television and in the news. Customers at my restaurant asked about him as they knew I was a contestant on The Apprentice. I always complimented and never said anything about what we had done at the Beverly Hills Hotel. However, this caused me a great deal of pain and anguish and I felt the need to confront Mr. Trump and ask him to apologize for his behavior. I also thought he might have been embarrassed by his behavior and that he 
and this would provide him with the opportunity to clear the air. I had no idea about his behavior with other women at the time. Therefore, I contacted his secretary in April of 2016 and asked if I could reconnect with Mr. Trump. I don't, forgive me. I did not tell her why I wanted to speak with him. She responded that perhaps his campaign team would follow up with me. I then wrote, with his, I then wrote his assistant an email on April 24th, April 21st, 2016, asking her to send my email directly to Mr. Trump. In that email, I stated, your interest me is it in that email, I stated, your interest in me is a potential employment the world's me. Your interest in me is anything more blew my mind and I lost my footing. I further said, I have been incredibly hurt by our previous interaction. I end by stating, I hope to hear from you and wish you continued success. Mr. Trump did not reply. Mr. Trump, when I met you, I was so impressed with your talents that I wanted to be like you. I wanted a job within your organization. Instead, you treated me as if an object to be hit upon. I was incredibly embarrassed by your sexual advances and shared this information with a select few people close to me. Mr. Trump, today I feel that you were interested in me only because you wanted to have a sexual relationship with me and for no other reason. After hearing the release audio tapes and your denials during the debate, I felt I had to speak out about your behavior. You do not have the right to treat women as such. You do not have the right to treat women as sexual objects just because you are a star. Thank you. All right, so again, she will not be taking questions, but I'll be happy to take a few questions. Ms. Allred, can you provide Let's do it one at a time, please. Ms. Allred, can you provide any corroborative information that would support her account? Is there anything specifically that you can bring forward to support it? Uh, yes, but I'm not going to bring it forward at uh, this time. What would that be? The two witnesses that I spoke with that she shared her experience with Mr. Trump with shortly after the incident that she described at the Beverly Hills Hotel. Okay, was she physically hurt in any way at the time? Uh, I'll just let her statement speak for itself. People are going to ask whether she supports any particular political party. I, you know, the question being whether she's doing this for some partisan reason. The question was, does she support any political party, uh, the answer is no, right? Is that right? No, I'm a Republican. Oh, Could she, she said, no, I'm a Republican. Do you have any emails or phone records or anything of that nature that you believe support your case? In the event that there is litigation, not filed by her, she has no intention of doing so at this time, then, of course, any and all communications that may be relevant would be available in the discovery process of a civil lawsuit. Now, have these accusations been made public before, and no. why now? For those who couldn't hear, the question was, have these accusations been made public before, and if not, why now? The answer is no. This is the first time she's making them public, and why now um, is for the reasons that she stated and that I stated in our statement. What is it about that video that, that brought her to, to make a public statement? Why, I, why I think I'm going to have her just stand on her statement because she's not going to be answering any questions. But obviously it was very disturbing to her. And that's mm -hmm. why she's speaking out today. Uh, Ms. Ulrich, James Cook from BBC News. May I ask you, Donald Trump is speaking right now. He's not commenting particularly on Summer's mm -hmm. account, but on, on the other accounts that we've heard so far. He says that women in these positions make these allegations, he says maliciously, for, for money and sometimes for fame. What is your response to that? And I wonder if, 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 if 
and tell her which comment, but we'll try to respond to that. Well, she will not comment well, sure, because well, she's not going to answer any questions. Behalf, but I'll answer it. We're not. She hasn't filed a lawsuit. She could have filed a lawsuit. She didn't file a lawsuit, and she's not seeking either money or fame. And actually, to the contrary, what she was very reluctant to come forward and speak here today, but did, did so because she felt after hearing the Access Hollywood tapes and after hearing his denial that she needed to do so. What's the time frame of these allegations taking place? Uh, in other words, what years? Um, it only mentioned 2007. Uh, well, the Beverly Hills Hotel was, was 2007. Um, how did you two become acquainted? How did your relationship start? Okay, the an how did we become acquainted was the question yes. from the gentleman. And the answer is, as thousands of clients have done over the last 40 years that I've been practicing law, she contacted me. And did anyone with any political connections approach her in any way and encourage her to come forward? You know, she's an adult. She made her own decision. Uh, I'll just say this. Her contact with me was long before politics were involved. What does she hope comes out of her, of her, of this revelation? And if you could look that way. Yeah, that's what I was just looking at you for the question. I know, I know. Okay, all right. What does she help? Yeah, what, what, she, what does she hope comes out? Of well, I mean, she's like here to tell what she alleges. I can. I, I want she to experienced. That. Okay, all right. I will point, look at that one. No, I'll answer yeah, you. Yeah, but she wants you to look at the camera. No, it's not okay. about you. Okay, well. It's not, I'm, I'm, I want to answer you. Thank you. I want to be able to sleep when I'm 70 at night. That's my answer. If we could just further this, how do you feel now that you've made this statement? This, this is a new experience. So I, I, a lot. A lot of emotions going on right now. Okay. All right. May I any ask other questions? One question, if, well, if you know what? I'm prepared. sorry. I, I, I'd like to have it's anybody who has not yet had an opportunity to ask a question first, if sure. there is such a question still pending. Did she sign a non disclosure agreement with The Apprentice? Did that cover anything beyond her time on The Apprentice? Okay. Well, I mean, she hasn't been on The Apprentice for, what, nine years or so? A long time. Well, she so. We're, we know, we're not aware of anything that would gag her for her lifetime in reference to what she alleges about Mr. Trump. Are you alleging any criminal activity where you dealt with any criminal authorities with this, file reports, which falls within the statute of limitations? Uh, no such report has been filed with anyone at this time. Okay. But may I, I ask what, what she thinks about the idea of Donald Trump being president? I wonder if she's prepared to answer that in her own words. All right. So we know that there are other people waiting. So we need to we need to uh, conclude the press conference. I'm sorry, you had one question. I'll take your last question. Oh, she's not. Okay. Did, the question is, did she witness any other misbehavior by Mr. Trump toward any other exactly. woman or man? And we cannot answer that question at this time. But I thank you for it. Well, All right. I, and I and I apologize, but we have other people. Who, do you have more women who contacted you. me? The, do I have more women who've contacted me? Many more women have contacted me. Will they be coming forward? I can't answer that question at this time. Uh, they won't be coming forward today. But thank you. <laughs> thank you. 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 Thank you.